Good afternoon and welcome back to the Perkins Garages YouTube channel. This here is a Black Pearl MG5 exclusive standard range featuring a 53 kilowatt battery and that's going to be feeding the 115 kilowatt motor. That's going to give you an all range 200 mile range. The vehicle is registered on a 2021 registration so we're going to take MG warranty with us until May 2028. The vehicle is incredibly low mileage, it's only done 12,000 miles this one and it's in tip top condition. So let me take you around it and show you everything that you need to know. We're going to begin by looking around the front of the vehicle and that is going to lead us nicely to some headlights which as you can see illuminated currently are some LED daytime running lights. Doesn't stop there with the illumination, these are the SIAC light technology so you've got some ultimate quality headlights there for good measure. The MG5 electric vehicle is charged from the front MG badge, so a quick push on the right hand side and that will reveal our two charging covers. First one, being AC, is typically the one you'll be using at home. This supports what the vehicle is supplied with, a 13 amp uh, plug socket charger, and we'd like to describe that as a trickle charger. So it's got a slower capacity, if you're in a bit more of a rush I could recommend getting the, uh, the Type 2 pod installed, it will take you up to 7 kilowatt an hour charging and that will comfortably charge it overnight, ready for any of your journeys the following day. I should have really showed you the second bung as well whilst I'm there, which is DC. So this char can be charged at DC rapid charging. So you can get a fast charge into this vehicle, not a problem. For all charging times and specifications, please do give us a call or visit the Perkins Garages website where it's all listed on there. We're going to move away around now to the offside front wheel. This MG5 has had the alloy wheel upgrade kit, so you've got slightly different alloys to what you might see on most MG5s. These are 16 inches in diameter. We have some TPMS sensors in every wheel, some gorgeous silver painted brake calipers, and they're fitted with Bridgestone tyres all the way around. Making our way around, we've got specifications such as keyless entry on both the door handles. Uh, the key's currently in, so it just bibbed at me because I was trying to lock it and the ignition is on, so I try to make it fancy with the lights. So keyless entry, power folding and heated door mirrors there as well. As we get to the rear of the vehicle, you can notice privacy glass, which trails all the way around the back. And as we're here, this gives you some nice reflections on the bodywork. So we'll make our way down from the top, all the way down to the offside rear wheel. And again, we've got mud flaps on this one as well, so keep your bodywork in tip top condition. As we're making our way around, we can see a bit of polish that hasn't been wiped off. I apologise about that. But we've got parking sensors all the way along the bottom lip, and they complement perfectly the rear parking camera. To the near side of the vehicle now, we're going to give it the exact same treatment. So we're going to work our way from the top all the way down, just to echo the quality of the bodywork here as well. It looks like a, a mirror on this side. It's so shiny after they've buffed it. Really, really lovely. So we're going to make our way to the near side front wheel once more and slowly make our way back round to the boot. There we are. Okay. So there's not many electric estate cars on the market and these are ideal because you've got tons and tons of space inside the rear boot there. We have a little cover under here which will expose the tyre compressor and the tyre sealing kit as well. So you're always going to be going in the right direction. These also come with a lovely pull-out Tornillo cover and it's completely retractable. Also, I did go into charging briefly earlier so let me elaborate on that slightly further. The vehicle is supplied, if I can get the case open, the vehicle is supplied with a 13 amp plug socket charger as standard. Type 2 cables are available from the mg.co.uk website if needed and obviously you can get your, your pod installed as well. But once again, any information, any help you need with how to charge your vehicle, let us know because we can always point you in the right direction for electricians or any help that you need to get yourself on the road. Anyway, so that's got a nice little cubby hole down to the right hand side to keep it nice and secure when you're driving along. Shut the boot up now, and we're going to come around to the rear of the vehicle. So these are ideal family cars. Um, you've got tons and tons of space in the back here. I'm over six foot, and I can fit in these just fine. These seats are ultra padded. You've got some synthetic leather all the way around. An ISO fixing point on the near side rear and on the offside rear. So just under this little cover will be a little metal bracket, 
you can attach the baby seats in and keep them nice and secure. When they grow up and they've got mobile phones and need them to be charged, we've got access of two 2.1 amp USBs in the rear there as well. Lovely. We'll shut that up now and have a look inside the front. It's going to beep at us because I've left the ignition on, but we'll just show you quickly. We have electric windows all the way around with a nice convenient child lock. Interior locking is found just to the left hand side of the door handle. We'll pan around now and show you the driver's seat. So this is a fully electric driver's seat, fully adjustable, and you've got really good mid-level support for your back, real like real comfort base there, and the leather is in top tip-top condition as you can see for yourself. The seat is one, two, three, four, five, six way adjustable, and we have a manual lumbar support on the side. So those of you with a bad back, these are going to be a very comfortable vehicle to drive. The MG5 is the vehicle of choice for most of the salesmen. They find them very comfortable. Okay, so we're inside the vehicle now. So let's go through the dashboard. The left hand side is where you'll find your speedo and the right hand side where you'd normally see your RPM gauge has been replaced with a percentage of power. Obviously, we're not moving currently, so it's 0% power. If you're flat out, that would be 100% power. Please also notice, if I zoom in a little bit, the blue section which states charge. So this is the Kinetic Energy Recovery System, otherwise known as KERS. So there's three levels of KERS, so this is going to be recovering what would be wasted kinetic energy as you're going along. So practically when you come off the throttle, it's going to put a slight resistance onto the motor and that's going to backfeed into the battery extending your range. So if in a town or city environment, see the number three there with a the colour band around it, that is signifying what level of recovery we're in. In a town and city, keep it number three, you'll be recovering as maximum amount of energy as possible. But if you're sitting on a motorway, for example, you might want it on number one because you won't be constantly decreasing your speed. So that's the little guide around the dash and obviously you've got your digital part in the middle there which is controlled by the arrows on the right hand side of the steering wheel. We've got a digital speedo in there, we've got different trip computers, kilometer total, electric information, live tyre pressures on every corner, we've got an energy flow graph there so you can see where the energy is coming and going from and back to your speedo. Different luminance levels and car settings can also be found in there as well. So if you notice the N there, that is signifying we're in normal drive mode. I'll show you the switches in a second. We've got Eco, Normal, and we've got a Sport mode as well. So notice how that makes a, an effect on the range, and that's because you're going to be deploying different amounts of energy. So the body control module makes an accurate calculation depending on how much energy you're going to be using. For example, if I was to turn on the air conditioning, it again, it makes an accurate calculation regarding the energy it predicts we're going to be using. So a lot of people uh, in like to refer to the term range anxiety because they're not sure if a <laughs> rainy cold night they're going to get home. These MGs are very sophisticated and as you can see it makes accurate calculations to let you know exactly how much energy is going to be used. So I just thought I'd highlight that because it's a very clever system. If I was to zoom out slightly once again we can see all the controls on the steering wheel. Again with the arrows to control the screen there, we have a voice command button, a programmable button there, a different source button and a pick up and decline phone call button. Just above that cluster we've got a volume rocker, a mute and a previous and next song. Whilst we're on the, the conversation of voice command and telephones, let me draw your attention to the infotainment screen. The left hand side it's all divided into some lovely little colours there, so the orange one is going to be for your media, we've got the green one in the middle for your navigation, and look at the turquoisey one at the end there, that's going to be for your Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, so whichever software you have on your mobile phone is going to be fully compatible with this vehicle. All you need to do is plug it in using that little data USB port there, and it will pretty much mirror the entirety of your phone onto that screen there. So not only is the voice command very handy because it keeps your, your obviously your hands off of your phone as you're going along. Personally, I use Apple, so it'll activate Siri. On an Android phone, it'll activate your Google Assistant. So from there, you can command it to do an all, all a range of things. So whether it's play Elton John, take me home, call home, send a text message to my brother, anything you 
would like to do on your phone, you can do it hands free. So it's more important to keep your hands off of the road. So that's a little glimpse of the screen there. And another thing about the Apple CarPlay and Android Auto is you don't have to use the MG Maps. You can use Apple Maps, Google Maps, Waze, anything you like. It's fully compatible on that screen. DAB, FM, AM, all are standard. You can Bluetooth your music as well, or you can play it off the software features I previously mentioned. Just below, we do have car settings, a music toggle switch, and we do have two heated front seats there as well. This effectively is a home button, so no matter wherever you are on the screen, so for example, if you're in your, your media, click there, that will turn you back to square one. Go further south once more, again, we've got a USB for charging, a USB for media, and a 12 volt socket there as well. This is where you'll find all your heating, ventilation, ooh, and air conditioning controls, so a bit too uh, happy on the, the zoom there. So all your heating, ventilation control, so you've got your, your temperature control to the left hand side, you've got your fan speed to the right hand side, we've got a front, a rear demist, recirculation, economy, automatic function, and different flows of vents are found here. Go back again, this is where I was playing around with the different mode buttons, so you can feel like a pilot when you're driving along, flicking it into different modes. So you've got the mode button and the KERS, the KERS Kinetic Energy Recovery System, is controlled using that toggle switch there. It's a very nice place to have it and a very positive feeling toggles. In this vehicle we have a rotary gear selector. It's a very genius idea. If I could just zoom out once more we could show the handbrake as well. Foot on the brake will unlock this system. You can simply turn it round to the R for reverse. We hear the beep of the parking sensors and the camera and parking sensors appear on the screen. I mean parking sensors because you've got a proximity sensor. So as you're reversing to an object, you'll get a distance in centimeters to let you know how far or near you are from the obstacle. It's a really nice feature if you reverse often. If I turn it round, or actually if I put it into park, please notice that applies the handbrake, if I push the button correctly, that applies the handbrake automatically. And as soon as you put it into a drive gear, then it will cancel automatically as well. So it's a very easy system to use because it's self-cancelling and self-applying. So the chances are you won't be using that switch very often. We also do have an auto hold feature there as well. Give you a quick glimpse of the passenger seat, just so I don't forget. As you can see, that looks perfect. It looks like it's never been sat on that one. So thank you very much for watching this short video. I do hope you found it useful. Again, any other information you require, such as charging times, charging locations, how to set up a charger, give us a call. We're more than happy to help you out with any problems you might have. Thanks for watching, and we'll speak with you very soon. Bye-bye.